So this short video is going to help us understand um, what the vocal genres of the Baroque period that we're studying are and help us organize a little bit of what's going on in the textbook. To begin with, we have three major vocal genres or types of music that happen in the Baroque period and they're related to each other, but we have operas, which are basically a drama that is sung Okay, we have oratorios, which is similar to opera, except uh, it's usually on a religious topic. And uh, if you think operas being about like Hercules and oratorios being about like Moses or, you know, Jesus Christ or something like that, uh, topically they're different. And um, operas tend to have all the trappings and accoutrements of an actual play, although it's musically done. And so the people will be in costumes and they'll be on stage and they'll be acting. Um, and there'll be scenery and things like that. Oratorios um, have that to begin with, but quickly that falls away and, um, and people don't act between or act out the parts. They, they stand there, the soloists and the, the chorus and the orchestra and they perform it. And uh, you're supposed to internalize or understand the story that's being told. Um, and then cantatas, which are uh, shorter, although by our standards still quite long, uh, music made for the worship service of the Protestant church. Um, and, and these three things are like super important kinds of music that are developed during that time. Now, the, the book is confusing because on page 102, at the bottom, I'm going to just turn the sideways here, it starts talking about recitative. And then on it's chapter 10, and then it gets to chapter 11, and immediately it says oratorio. And then In the same large bold font, it says aria on the next page, and then talks about chorus. And so, from um, finally the chorale and such, from an organizational point of view, he's uh, the, compo uh, the the writers of the book are trying to go through in a in a linear way to introduce a concept and another concept and another concept, but. Um, it's confusing then from a hierarchical point of view what things are. So let me get that straight for you right now. It's been on the screen this whole time. Operas, oratorios, and cantatas are big, big, big pieces of music written for voices. They have different uh, purposes and um, different modes of how they present that music, but these are the big pieces of music that we're interested in studying about. And they are made up of um, sections Okay, and the sections are called recitatives, arias, and choruses. And they do have instrumental sections as well, interludes and such that are just done by the instrumental ensemble. But these are the three big singing things that uh, happen. These are small, tiny sections, small relative. But if you think of a recitative, is, um, it's like sing speaking uh, to advance uh, either narration or the plot or dialogue. Arias are like songs for soloists or a small group of soloists. You could have a duet or a trio or something like that. And choruses are like songs, but they involve everybody, like a huge number of singers, usually uh, the ensemble of singers as well. So if you, um, if, if you want to think about how we're going to organize our study, first, we're going to make sure you know what these three things are. And when you understand the attributes of these, um, you'll see that when we string these together, we can uh, we can create larger structures and tell the stories in these. Cantatas don't have stories; they're topically oriented. Um, anyhow, so the first thing we're going to do is I, I think people get arias, their songs. They have they feature a soloist. Uh, in the Baroque period, it was a way of um, of presenting beautiful music about a topic or a moment in the story or something like that. Choruses 
um, they do similar kind of things, but you know, time is suspended there and we, we take a moment and sing about it. Recitatives are the ones that uh, I think give modern uh, you know, people a little bit of a more difficult time to, to conceive of and why it would be used because stylistically it's very different from songs. It literally is static music usually. Uh, it's called recitative secco or dry recitative um, when it was developed. They have more fluid ones with a little more timing and beats called recitative accompagnato or recitative arioso, which is sort of a blend of other things. But the basic recitative, um, you know, a chord is played by the continuo, and then the singer gets up and sings, um, just sing songs words, and the rhythm is taken out of meter. There's no beat. Uh, it keeps changing key because uh, it's considered more dramatic and ways of highlighting or accentuating the, the drama or meaning of the words is done in recitative as well and, and so on. Um, we, uh, uh, to give you an idea of how this would work, and, and we're actually going to go over and look at some YouTube videos of people doing a nice job explaining this and giving examples. Um, we used to punish our children, punish, <laughs> that's not really the right word, we used to um, de-escalate uh, fights between our children when they were growing up. Uh, if they would come and uh, our daughter would say, dad, so-and-so, you know, one of the brothers took my, my toy or was mean to me or something like that. And then the brother was yelling, no, no, I didn't. That, you know, my sister's lying. Da, 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 da. I'd put up my hand and I'd say, uh, 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 opera rules, which meant that they had to sing their cases and complaints in recitative. And so again, sing songy style. Uh, usually my daughter who was complaining about that would be less, um, I'm, you know, um, standoffish. Like the boy would say like, I'm not doing that, that's dumb. And then the, the daughter would say like, dad, my brother, he took the toy. And then, you know, the brother would be like, no, I didn't. I'd say, ah, recitative. And then, you know, she'd keep singing. He's such a jerk. He always takes my things. I can't play on my own. He keeps bugging me. And, and at that point, the, the brother would be like, realized that if he didn't sing, the sister was going to get all her story in and he, he, uh, he would get in trouble because none of his defenses put up there. And so then he would join in and re, you know, go like, like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. She's lying. And, and, you know, by about the third or fourth time we did that, it was, it was too funny not to laugh. Um, but, but we have had opera rules day since and it's a great way to um get a, a concept of how recitative works not, that's not why i did it but it, it was funny for them and they realized as they sang their complaints how ridiculous some of them sounded and uh, pretty soon it you know we were just laughing especially when i joined back in and and sang back to them and we had like a three word recitative going that's what recitative is now uh after this video which is going to end real soon here uh you're going to jump out and you're going to see a couple other videos of people explaining recitative. And once you have this guy down, uh, then you can go on and look at arias and choruses in your textbook. And I'll do a little bit of guidance with some study guide uh, things as well. But a big part of the test coming up is, do you know the attributes of these guys technically, like from chapters one through six? Is it metered? Does it have a strong sense of beat? Is it in the same key most of the time? Uh, how many people are singing? Um, does it have a tuneful melody or not? What's the texture? And for that, there is a chart that uh, will be up online that you should download, print out, and then uh, grab the information from the textbook and from these lectures and even other people's um, YouTube videos will point to and do a comparison of those questions. Uh, you'll need to know that information for the test. You'll also need to be able to hear the difference between recitatives, arias, and choruses, which is really not that difficult if you've done diligence by listening to the pieces in your textbook and have thought about and, and, and done the comparison analysis of their attributes. You're actually starting to get pretty good at listening now if you've done everything that we've asked you to do um, through units one and two. And that's it. Once we get through understanding these guys here, and their differences and their purposes and things and the technical aspects of them. Then uh, next we'll dive in and say, well, what is an oratorio? What is an opera? 
And what is a cantata? How are they different? What are they for? What can we expect out of them? And uh, then we'll be rounding it around and saying, well, now what are all the test questions for the unit test going to be? And get ourselves ready for that. All right. Jump back out into the daily schedule and see what else there is to do.